YouTube, what's up, what's happening? Here I am today bringing you another video and uh, just going to go back and remake my how to airbrush a shirt video, bringing you guys an updated version and of course the version in Spanish. Um, so, you know, I see a lot of videos on how to airbrush a shirt and this and that. This is kind of how I go about it. Again, take it for what it is, take tips, t tricks, whatever. Um, there's going to be a couple things you're going to need to get. Obviously, you're going to need a shirt, you know, plain white shirt. 100% cotton works the best uh, to hold in paint. And uh, yeah, these are 100% cotton. Uh, this is like a Gildan heavy cotton brand. Um, and so you're going to need a shirt, obviously. You're going to need something to slide into the shirt. Um, you don't want the paint to go from one side of the shirt to the other. So I have these shirt boards um, and I have actually just made these myself. If you go to um, a lumber store like uh, Lowe's Home Depot, they have stuff called hardboard and it's just a really thin, it's almost like cardboard thin um, board and you just chop, chop it up into uh, you know the right sizes, you know different sizes, you know just depending on what size you need it for. This is the board I use for small t-shirts. So a small shirt kind of fits on there pretty good. You know, so you're going to want, you know, cardboard works pretty good. You could use, you know, pretty much anything you can slide a shirt on um, will work just great. I've seen, you know, I've used all kinds of stuff uh, in my day. So this is just what I found has worked the best and lasted the longest. I've had some of these boards for quite a long time, as you can tell. The paint just cakes on there, and it just just keeps going. So you're going to need those two things right off the bat. Of course, you're going to need paint. Um, a lot of people keep asking what kind of paint do I use. Even though I say it in almost every video, I use Createx uh, airbrush paint. Um, and a lot of people are asking if I use it reduced or straight out of the bottle. Um, usually for t-shirts like this, I use it straight out of the bottle. I don't like reducing it in any way. Um, and that's mainly just so it doesn't fade after we're done. So you need that. And um, obviously you need your airbrush and a compressor, you know, of your choice. Of course, I have a video um, about how to pick a compressor and what kind of compressor um, you really need for airbrushing. Um, and you're going to need a press or an iron, so that's something else you might want to keep in mind. Um, an iron works just fine. Um, you don't want one that does steam. You don't want to steam a shirt. You just want to iron it afterwards. But yeah, basically, um, once you get everything you need, you're going to want to slide the shirt onto your board or cardboard or whatever it is you have. I know if you go down to Hobby Lobby, they have cardboards. Um, that are made for shirts that have even like uh, parts for the sleeves and stuff that are kind of nice. Um, but again, I like using these shirt boards. They're a little bit heavier, so they won't blow away. Um, they kind of hold the shirt a little bit better. And again, they just last a really long time. I've had these, you know, some of these for like five, seven years now. It's five, long time. So um, once you have your shirt on there, you're going to want to get some clothes pins and uh, you know regular clothes pins like this work just fine um, but you know if, if you want to get fancy with it they sell you know you can look around they have like metal ones like this and again these just last longer I've had these metal ones for quite a while they're really caked with paint but these are really cheap and you can find them just about anywhere so and you're going to want to um, pretty much stretch the shirt on here but you don't want to stretch it so much that you can tort it. You just want to keep it nice and straight. A lot of these shirts, when you buy them, will kind of have a fold mark right down the middle. But if not, it's pretty good to use your hand, you know, as a way of kind of guessing where the center is. You know, I'm pretty good at it because um, I've done this for a long time. But, you know, if you need a good idea, you know, measure off the neck and, you know, the, the sleeves here. And just try to get it on there nice and straight. And that'll help your uh, design be on the shirt nice and straight. <clears throat> and you just pretty much need to clip, clip all this stuff that's, you know, going to get in your way or, you know, get all these wrinkles out of here and you want to keep it nice and flat and straight. 
you don't really need a clip too much, you know, just just enough to hold it in place, basically. Again, you don't want to stretch or contort the shirt too much, because then when you take the clips off, your image will go back to normal and it'll look funny, you know, so you want to keep it just nice and straight. <clears throat> Next thing you want to know, before you even paint anything, is most shirts when you wear them, you know, as you can see here, this area of the shirt here is kind of on the curve of my body. Your body is not flat, you know, it's not like a board, you know, it has a roundness to it. Even if you're skinny, you know, your body has a roundness to it. So, even on a small shirt like this, you want to give yourself maybe like a hand, like four fingers, you know, on each side, four fingers off the top too, you know, if you want a centralized design. You really want to give yourself at least four fingers off of the off of your collar here so that'll kind of give you a good area of where to put your design at and anything below that obviously looks pretty good again anything on this area it's just kind of kind of bleed off to, to the edges so you you know keep that in mind when you're painting um, <clears throat> if somebody asks for something they want down the side you really want to put it somewhere right here you don't want it you know down this because then it's going to kind of be over here somewhere Okay, so next thing obviously is you're going to need your paint. Um, uh, and so for this shirt, we're just going to do a simple name design. Again, if you need to use stencils and stuff like that, I have videos um, showing how to use stencils and how to make stencils and, you know, the different kinds of stencils. Um, so, you know, go and check those out. But for this shirt, we're just going to use a simple, we're just going to do a simple name. Um, and you know we're just going to use a couple colors and just to give you a good idea of kind of how I go about this so I'm just going to load up some blue and then you know we'll get started And so a lot of people always see me kind of like blowing out my gun and you know switching colors and stuff and so I have a bottle um, just a regular Createx bottle that you know I had already used the paint out of and so I went and washed it out and uh, what I did is I have this bottle always kind of sitting here and it's always like three quarters of the way full with just a drop of soap so in between colors um, I like to run water with soap through my airbrush and that kind of helps clear out the extra color inside the airbrush as well as blowing it back. Um, you know, so this is another helpful tip is always kind of keep a bottle of water around. Um, you know, or just, you know, one of your little bottles with water and, and a little bit of soap. And that'll help uh, really quickly clean out your airbrush. <clears throat> so what I've done is loaded up some Maui Blue. And uh, again, giving me, myself about four you know fingers off of there I'm just gonna go ahead and make a nice little circle and uh, when you're gonna paint a shirt it's always good to, you know keep your back nice and straight you wanna lock in your elbows and you kinda wanna use your waist uh, to paint this kinda helps keep a more steady flow you don't really wanna paint with one hand your lines will be super unsteady you know and again something like that if your line gets stuck with one hand it, it will completely show so you want to be have firm grip, you want to work deliberately, and you want to make sure you're steady with uh, your movements. And again, a lot of times slower is not better. So if you're going to make a line, pick, pick it and do it. Don't think about it while you're doing it. Um, it's kind of the best way. Be deliberate. Um, so again, I'm just going to do a circle. I've kind of already you know where. I'm looking, you know, if you want, you can take a pencil, mark it off, you know, so you have a good idea of where it is. Um, but again, I'm just going to do a nice little halo around here. And 
it's, it's a simple little halo. Again, if, if you've used my how to airbrush videos, you should know, you know how to make it a, a nice little blurred outline. Um, but just to add a name, I'm just going to add a little like a ribbon. Again, you know, really blurred out, nothing really um, detailed or anything like that. just you know that creates a nice little simple layout to add a name um, again you want to be deliberate when you're working with it you do not want to cake paint onto the shirt you, there is no need to completely saturate the shirt with paint um, it's okay if it's just kind of on there lightly um, it will last it'll stick like this trust me you don't need to cake the paint on there so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna load up some black so another thing always keep in mind <clears throat> if you're working with uh, well any kind of uh, bottles you always want to make sure your bottles nice and clean uh, your spout and your little uh, you know all of them have a little breathing hole you want to make sure it's all nice and clean so that your airbrush uh, doesn't have no complications when pulling out paint or anything like that you want, of course you want to make sure your airbrush is running good and nice and clean um, you know and that you know that just goes for any time you're airbrushing so I want to keep that in mind but again all we're gonna do is put a name on here and uh, you know I'm just gonna use the name Isabel um, on this um, and yeah again if you've watched my how to airbrush script lettering and you know other videos you have a pretty good comprehension of, of you know where to do it but now you have a pretty good idea of placement and now for size of the letters you know, again, anything bigger than your hand is probably going to look way too big. And anything smaller, um, you know, unless you really have to make it that small, it's just not going to stand out enough. So, and it's always good enough to use four fingers, five fingers, something like that. Um, and I like to make the capital letter bigger than the rest of the writing, so... As you see, I just do a basic layout and then I come back and I decorate it. Um, that's pretty much how I like to do it. Um, I've seen other artists, you know, do it in one stroke. Um, again, I like to keep it nice and clean and tight, so I don't like doing that. And I don't like getting too many fuzzies, you know. And really at this point, uh, the, the lettering is, is all up to you, right? So, you know, I'm just giving you tips on how to actually airbrush a shirt. But the design and everything is up to you. That's what makes you an artist. So go ahead and go crazy. Again, you want to make sure you keep it, um, you know, in the center. If it's a shirt you plan to wear or you're making it for somebody, you know, they're probably going to appreciate it if it's nice and centered and it looks good. So... So now I'm just going to load up some hot pink and just finish out the design. I'm going to add a shadow to the letters and just a little bit of sparkles to it just to give the name um, a little bit extra pop and give the design a, a, you know, a more full look.
these sparkles are really easy if, if you know how to make the dagger stroke just make the dagger stroke coming out of the same point in different directions and then go ahead and add a dot right in the middle and uh, it creates a nice sparkle effect it's easy to do and uh, even just adding rat tails coming out of the center design you know just added a nice burst um, kind of effect going on so it's all stuff to keep in mind it's, it's simple to do and it creates a nice bright bold um, look so you know it all depends on how you want to do it but I like using bright bold colors and you know spacing out my design enough to where it makes the shirt look full it makes the design look bigger than it actually is um, so you know it's the whole thing wait make one man feel like a thousand kind of thing going on here so and see we've done all this at the bottom nothing says that we have to do that across the top so all I'm gonna actually do is add a pink halo going across the top over this just to give the design some kind of break. And there you can see it kind of gives the design a little bit of variation. It's not just busy starburst stuff all over, you know. And it's just a quick little way of painting a shirt. Um, again, you know, the design is all up to you. Um, I'm just trying to give you tips on how to actually paint the shirt. So there you go. For the most part, the shirt's done, um, you know, when we're painting it here. So the next step is to just let it dry for a while, you know, give it a good five minutes or so, and then we're going to take it over the iron. Now you've painted your shirt, you have it all done, and you're like, yeah, and I'm going to want to wear it. Hold up a sec. you got to press and or iron the shirt. Um, what I have here is a really old press. It's just a little tiny press. I've had this press for a really long time. Uh, again, if you could find a press, I recommend you buy one. They, you know, they sell usually about 300 bucks. Um, you know, it seems like a costly investment, but your shirt's again will fade if you do not press them um, you need to press them the paint is cured with pressing 90% um, of paint will cure and last longer if you press them and if you run them through some kind of heat process so what we're going to do is take our shirt off of here Open up our press. And you know, I'll set it down. Um, this press is set to about 350 degrees. You're going to want to do about 350 degrees for about one to two minutes. You don't want to do it more than a minute at a time. If you do it any longer than that, you risk um, yellowing or browning the shirt. And, you know, if you do let it go long enough, you will leave a nice black spot on the shirt. I've seen it happen. Don't burn your shirt. So that's pretty much it. After you're done pressing it, you know, you're going to want to go over the whole design, of course. But after you're done, you're good to go. And you could wear the shirt and it'll be good to wash. You won't fade and you know it'll last you for years I've seen shirts that last I mean designs that last longer than the shirt where the shirt is falling apart and the customer will bring it back and be like can you make me another one I really love this shirt but the shirts not lasting your design is great but the shirt is falling apart I have holes in it and stuff but your design is holding up great so you know keep that in mind the better you press it the better it's gonna be don't burn your shirt but make sure you do it. But anyway, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. Helps me out either way. Uh, subscribe for more videos like this. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.